Hello. I I got some contact paper from the Dollar Tree and I covered up my surface. I think this might be a little bit less glary than it was before. So hopefully that works out. I I had a hard time deciding which contact paper to go with. Also, I found these at Joann's the other day. How cool are these? They are stitch markers that have a little clip on them. So you could attach like a little note that says um, begin repeat here or one that says if you're going to be putting your project away for a little while you could put like the hook size that you used and maybe the name of the pattern or something like that. So I grabbed a pack of these because I think they could just be quite convenient being that they hold a slip of paper and lock into your crochet. For today, I'm going to be doing the extended half double crochet. And to start out, make a slip knot. Um, this is, I don't remember what yarn this is. It's in a weird ball um, with no label, um, but it's worsted weight. And so I'm using an H five millimeter crochet hook. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and chain 16 to start this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I've got my 16 chains. That should be about four inches. I didn't bring a ruler back here with me. Um, let's see, I think my scissors, my scissors are about four inches long. Hey, that's convenient. So that's about right. And we're only gonna chain one for our turn. So this is the stitch I'm going to be working into, chain one, and then you need to yarn over just like you would to start a normal half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, chain one, and then you're gonna pull through all three of those loops. So just like the extended single crochet, it just has an extra chain in the middle to make it a bit taller. So yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, chain, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert, Pull up a loop, yarn over, chain, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, chain, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, chain, Pull through all three. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, chain, yarn over, pull through three. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, chain, through all three. Next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, chain, pull through all three loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, chain one, pull through all three loops on the hook. So it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. It's quite similar 
to a normal half double crochet except you're adding that one little chain in there. Um, <clears throat> I know that I avoided the extended stitches for a very long time because they just looked more complicated to me but they're they're really not too bad um, as long as you can avoid muscle memory and remember to do that chain in the middle of the stitch um, which is part of why I was repeating it out loud for so long the other part is because like that's the point of the video isn't it or maybe it's not I don't know I uh I just was talking and forgot to chain see or maybe I was talking and remembered and for thought I forgot I don't know yarn over pull up a loop chain pull through three loops so I don't I don't know if everyone that does this starting on YouTube thing feels like they're just talking into a void for the first little while but I definitely feel that way like nobody uh well I've had a few spam comments but no like genuine comments and while there's a little bit of views it's not really enough to where I feel like anybody's actually listening to anything I'm saying so it's kind of weird to be like like I'm trying to make tutorials but who's watching him is somebody on watch him someday and um, I just I don't know anyway when you get to the end of the row just chain one you're not gonna chain two and then yarn over insert your hook pull up a loop chain one insert through three loops yarn over pull up a loop chain one pull through all three yarn over pull up a loop chain one pull through all three yarn over pull up a loop chain one pull through all three so I, I think that pretty well shows you how to do it and uh, also don't forget that on YouTube you can change the speed of videos so if you ever watch a tutorial one that I've made or one that somebody else has made and you find that you're not able to follow it at the same pace as whoever's doing it drop that speed down I think it's either the gear or there's three little dots in the corner of your YouTube video and yeah you can just slow it down like I like to watch through when I'm watching like how to do a certain stitch videos I'll watch once through at normal speed without even having the yarn in my hand um, so I'll watch the whole video at normal speed or even slightly sped up and then I'll start it again and get out my yarn and I'll slow it down and follow along with when it's actually slow instead of being at normal speed because I think it's difficult to keep up when you're learning something new um, so there's just a little YouTube viewing tip for you that I didn't I didn't think about for a long time and I've utilized it a lot since I figured it out all right so there is two rows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Somehow I have fifteen stitches. I don't. I thought I did an extra turning chain so I would only have so I would have 16 um, but yeah I guess I, I guess I should have counted at the end of the first row oh well um, so I'm gonna go ahead and carry on with this um, and make a little square 
and so I've got all of my squares I'm working on weaving in the ends of them and then I might sort of sort them out by color family like these um these might go one way these might go all together like like just sort of so they aren't 100% clashing and then I found I found something online where they basically made a bag out of squares so if you line them up then you would fold this one up and that would be the side and then you could put two here and here and basically make the bag however big you want it um so I think I might do that just just so these aren't just squares hanging around doing absolutely nothing um <clears throat> I thought about doing like a blanket or something um but I just don't because I'm using up random scrap yarn and it's not very cohesive I think I would hate whatever I ended up making if I tried to make a blanket. So I think grabbing hunks of colors that go well together and making a few bags out of them, then that would be convenient, especially since they just did, um, they just started one of those plastic grocery bag bands where I live. So anytime Anytime you go grocery shopping, you have to bring your own bags. Um, they might not be good for grocery bags, being that they're all different stitches and they'll all stretch differently. But, at the very least, I can put them in my car and stuff these bags full of the empty grocery bags. Oh, you could almost even shape them like a, like a little tissue box. I might try that. I might try and put a, like a top on it. And then leave this space open. So like the, this is the top of the bag. But it has a small opening in the middle instead of like opening this way. And then you could just grab a bag and pull it out. That might be neat. I don't know. I'll have a lot of the squares to mess with. Um, so we'll see uh, how that works out. Oh, obviously... Um, include that in a video either the making of it or um, or the like completed project so anyway that's all for tonight thanks bye